Hello and welcome to part one of Alpine Shadow. So today was lock-in day. So we covered this whole canvas in 30 minutes with light washes. So what I mean by that, that's a mixture of paint and uh, Amsol mineral spirits. So you can see we've got darks uh, and lights and grays and even some subtle, subtle dark greens down there. And uh, we started out really loose and uh, we figured out half the canvas, canvas is going to be dark, the other half is going to be basically light gray with a little sky. So that's what I concentrated on. I tried to look at the big picture and I uh, used some bigger brushes to kind of mop that stuff in. And um, I think I've got a good foundation for what we're going to do tomorrow. About the only really defining thing I really had to find out today was where the edge of the lake was. And you can see once you get into the um, uh, tutorial that you can still see that dark line right in there. And I put that in with a knife. So that's my foundation line. From there I'm going to build up from and from there I'm going to build down from. All right. So enough of me talking. I want to encourage you before I switch you over to get outside and paint, paint with your friends, get critiques, and uh, hang in there with me and I'll keep uh, producing these videos and make you very proficient landscape painters. All right, thanks for coming by. Hello and welcome to part one of Alpine Reflection. And uh, this is part one of a three-part series. I'm George Call, welcoming you back to continuing a landscape painting. Well, since we're starting a new series, let's just uh, reflect here a little bit on our materials. I've got uh, my two blues, Ultra and Cobalt. I've got two reds, Alizarin and Cad Red. I've got an orange, a yellow ochre, I've got lots of yellows as you can see. I think this is Hansa um, Deep, this is Hansa Medium, this is a lemon yellow, transparent oxide red, transparent oxide brown, titanium white here. I've got like a hog hair brush here, I think it's a Da Vinci number no. 6. And then I have three rosemary brushes which are uh, long flat series two seven eights and then I have three that are in two seven nines. So I have a six, a four, and a two uh, long flat series two seven nines. So that's the uh, situation here and we will get started with the mixture. So here I am staring a blank canvas like, oh my gosh. So never be intimidated by these things. Just make sure your canvas is sturdy. I've got a nice clamp on here and hope everything is going to stay in there nice and tight. That's one thing. I have my materials ready. I have my Gamsol here to the right. And um, got some palette knives. I've got a palette scraper, which is a razor blade on a... I like this long shaft, then you don't get your knuckles covered in paint when you're so close to the surface. So I think I'm ready to do my mixtures. What's going through my mind is um, I'm going to be putting on these thin washes to uh, figure out where all this stuff is going to go. But one thing I see when I'm trying to make this decision is that when I look at my reflection, or I mean my, my uh, reference, there's dark on one side and there's kind of light on another. So I think what we can do is work in that direction. Don't have to be too accurate right now in the way of where exactly this stuff's going to be because it's going to be thin, it'll, be, uh, it'll dry quickly, and we can paint over it. I don't want to cover up all this stuff though. I think it's really, really... Uh, important that at this point is to say where are my darks going to be where are my lights going to be so let's make a dark mixture and then we'll get a light mixture so here's blue and transparent oxide brown blue 
transparent oxide brown, this ultra blue. See, I'm keeping my knife, my mixing knife, nice and clean. What I'm get on to my students about is having dirty knives. So I'm going to get this uh, number six uh, long filbert series 278. I'm going to get a little bit of turp in there. And I'm going to say there's kind of some darks over in a little bit more brown in there. Brown. It's real soupy. I'm trying to take a measurement. I think there's more water than mountain. I could be wrong. It's about the same, huh? I'm not supposed to have these things divided right in the center here. Yeah, this, um, these uh, series 278s are kind of like, a little bit more like mops. hope the person that makes these brushes doesn't hear that. But they hold a lot of material. Brown, blue. I know there's a reflection down here, but I'll get to that in a second, or in a few minutes. I think some of this shadow goes over in here too. I think there's some reflection over in this area, so I'm going to get my paper towel and do some wiping away over here. I think there's a reflection down here too. Well, there's a whole bunch of this uh, brush mark here, so I'm going to try to comb it down with my, I'm using a great big look like house painting brush, but it's a primer bristle creative mark, which I think is just an off brand. You can see I'm softening my edges and getting away from that brushy stuff you can see from every little mark I put down with the with the brush. All right, so I now need to go to a little bit more of a gray um, as I go up. So I'm going to um, introduce this uh, Remington Cold Gray, one of my favorite grays, 717. You can make a variety of grays here just by adding white. I don't want to add white too much right now. So I'm just going to White takes longer to, to dry. So I'm going to just add some, some gray here. And I see a gray's coming in here. And I know there's some back in here. Oops, I screwed up. I gotta go back to dark. This dark actually goes up this way. Oh. Barn Cat has her studio cat has now arrived. She's racing around here like a mad cat. She likes to just show off and make her presence known, particularly if I'm on camera. Okay, let's go back to gray. Stop it! She's clawing my model stand. I 
there's a darker gray as we go up. And it looks like I'm running out of product here. So I added just a little bit more Gamsol. This comes in like that. Maybe this goes over here a little bit, dips down a little bit more than what I have. Okay, so now you're starting to see where all the darks and in between darks are going to be. So, all of you detail people are wondering, what am I doing? When can I jump into detail? Well, not today, that's for sure. We want to try to just get the big stuff in right now. So what I'm going to do is clean my palette a little bit and see if I can maybe put this dark stuff over to one side, see if I need it. I'm about out of gray, that's useless. And now I'm going to clean up my palette. Oh, and for you regular viewers, you can see I cleaned my palette this weekend. You can actually see the, the white underneath. A lot of people like a gray and different things underneath your palette, and I think that's, that's probably good. But this um, particular palette I have has a white underneath it. It's been there. It's already glass has been glued down on top of this white surface, so it's not much I can do about it. And I've come to realize I can, I can work on it and figure it out, but I do recommend a light gray underneath your palette underneath your glass. Okay, one second while I step back, give that a minute to dry, and let me get some of this strokey stuff out of the way. And take care of that. Okay. And I think up here we could probably do some cobalt up in the sky. Might as well just cover this whole darn thing up. And you see, what about the clouds? Well, we'll get to that shortly. And if you want to get all these little white things out of the way, try to cover up your canvas. My canvas is getting loose. All right, that takes care of the entire canvas. We have got everything in there that needs to be in there. And I'm trying to keep control of my palette so that I have big mixing areas. That's my favorite thing to talk about. It's everybody's trying to save paint and they make a mixture, they leave it, they make another mixture, they leave it, and they have mixture, mixture, mixture. Pretty soon they have nothing, no clean area to make a nice clean mixture. All right. Next I'm going to go in and give it a little bit more drying time. If I was using pure turp like I do in the field, this would be dry already. All right. I'm going to try to do a little bit more cleanup and figure out where my lights are going to be. So I'm pulling out this uh, number two rosemary. Got some turp on it. And I'm going to try to figure out where these snow fields are going to be. I just add a little turp. I think 
this maybe is up here a little bit more. And you say, well, I learned how to do this in watercolor painting. That's where I learned it. I don't know if that's too accurate, so I need to go back to my dark and maybe darken this area up a little bit. And then there's bigger areas right in here. This particular location is Rocky Mountain National Park, one of the areas I walked into last summer. And it was a, I think three and a half miles or something uphill. It was a, it was a push. I think these have to go up a little bit more, so. There's a. And then down here is reflection. The reflection does not seem to be as bright as the as the snow is reflecting. I don't know if that's a law or not. I've seen reflections that seem to be brighter than what they're, ref they're referring to, what they're reflecting. All right, so we're 15 or 16 minutes into this, and you can kind of see we have this light pattern going on in here. And I think we also have some mountains up in here with some design going on here. Now, I can also change these things as I go along, but these are kind of nice indicators of where things are. Gives me some some idea of what I where things are and going there. There's kind of a light spot over here. It's not snow, it's just a light spot. And then there's the top of the old uh, shrubbery over here, this alpine shrubbery over on the right. Okay. Now I want to take a measurement here. See where everything is. So this is here. I don't want everything to be right in the center. So I'm going to make a determined line of where the water is. So I'm just making a blue brown mixture. I'm going to add some alizarin to it. And I'm loading up the edge of my knife. See that nice crisp edge there? And I'm going to say that this painting the edge of the water is right there. Now we'll take a look at if I got this in the right spot. And it looks like I pretty much made a uh, parallel line across there where it's equal here and here. It's not going uphill or downhill. Now you can see, again, I'm going along with this theme of where are my major uh, starting and stopping points are, okay? So, I'm going to get back, and since I have the time, I'm going to start working on some of my major darks, okay? So I'm going to get this uh, number four rosemary and start making some uh, dark greens, I guess. So here's some um, blue blue, yellow ochre, a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown, and that is a very, very dark, subtle green. Again, look how clean I'm keeping the bottom of my knife. So, 
remember to do good habits. So what I'm thinking now is, look how blared out my, my brushes. That's okay. So let's go back to blue, yellow ochre, a little bit of red, a little bit of brown. Just see some darks here and there that Anyway, by making the shapes of those trees, it's giving the viewer a sense of those trees are farther back. And as they come around the lake, they get a little bit bigger right here on the right. There's also a dark that snakes across here above the snow field. I think there's a little bit more blue in there. I'm going to add some cobalt to one side. And it kind of goes over in here a little bit. And then it snakes above the I don't know, maybe you can make some sense of that, figure out what I'm doing there. All right, then we have the, some real good darks underneath the bushes here. I don't think I have to go up that far. And then there's some good darks around the rocks. Oh, there's a couple rocks that are peeking above the water too. And there is dark reflection coming off the trees. And over here too. Better make that a little darker. Okay, I'm starting to see the form. See how this thing is starting to come out? Starting to make sense of where everything is. How am I doing here? We're doing good on time. All right, next phase. Let's see what we can do with um, some, uh, since we still have this dark mixture, if we add more yellow ochre and then some more uh, Hansa yellow, let's see what we come up with. I gotta get that lighter, I'm gonna add some lemon to it. Okay, there's some lighter green. And let's clean off the darker stuff from my number four flared out brush. And let's get this stuff some of this lighter green put in here. I think it comes out a little bit more in a few places. And that should do it. Which means I missed out on some dark. So let's go back to some dark. Blue, blue, brown, yellow ochre, red, blue, more blue. And I think we got to get some good darks in here. All right. Takes care of that one. 
Alrighty, I'm going to clean my brush and we're going to go up to the, to the uh, side of the mountain. I don't know if I need to save that, but I will see what I can do. Alright, so with um, our gray, I'm going to go back to the old uh, cold gray stuff. By Remington, number 717, and make some gray mixtures. So I've got a light and a dark, and I'm going to add some, oh, some viridian to the gray. Because I see dark grays, I see light grays. So I have a dark, medium, and in between. All right, one second here as I get back one more time and take a good look at what I'm doing. So I want to launch into this gray area at least try to get the values right and in the right place. So, let's go back to number four. Go into a medium gray and see if that is it's too light. So I'm going to go to the dark gray and try to get the darker area up in here. Yes, the cat is meowing. Stop it! No clawing. She claws the heck out of stuff. And I'm going to add some of this dark gray over in the darks we have. Over in this area. Just tap it on top. See, I'm just tapping it. Because these darks are not as dark. These dark areas here where I'm applying are not as dark as the trees. Okay, I'm going to go to dark. I'm going to add a little darkness to it. That's that blue mixture, blue, darker blue mixture. And I'm going to put that over in here. I may have made that too dark. Try to lighten that up a little bit. I don't know if I did justice to that. Let me just see if I can... Wipe that just a little bit. I think that might do the trick. I also need some darker darks, darker grays. Um, kind of coming down here. Something coming down here. And a few others. Dark guys right up in this area. So you people that want to be more impressionistic painters, you see, you can see, I start from the very beginning with these, not trying to define every line. And that will be completed. Uh, if we're going to do any of that kind of stuff, we're going to do that on the layer, part three of uh, this session. I want to go to a lighter stuff, and I'll put some of that lighter gray. right in this area up in here. Oh. Now I need to tighten this thing. I need a little bit of turp in here. I keep referring to it as turp, it's not, it's Mineral Spirits by Gamsol. And I need a lighter gray, kind of right in this area. Okay. 
So I'm just about coming up on time. And I want to take some double looks here of what I can do. Oh, I'm going to use some of this lighter gray. Remember I said there was this lighter area up in here? I'm going to put some of this stuff, lighter stuff, right up in here and snake some of it around. Maybe a little bit darker up in here. And a little darker on this side. All right, I think that brings us up to our 30 minute mark. And that puts us really, I think, in good shape for part two tomorrow. And uh, I think it's a good start. So. Yeah, very good. Thank you for coming by and looking forward to getting back with you in part two. So um, we're going to bring uh, Alpine Lake or Alpine Lake reflection to an end. All right. Thanks very much for coming by. Bye bye.